<laughs> Rust has finally gone to far. Get a little closer. What do you see? That's right. Perfection. Wait, this is just a wrench. Anyway, uh, welcome back to another build tutorial. This is going to be a little bit of an extension of our earlier Super Cube video. I've got it linked up there in the top corner now. What we're going to do today is we're going to build a Super Forge using the industrial update and these electric furnaces to create a furnace room that requires no wood to function takes ore, like uncooked material from one box and cooks it, processes it, and pumps it into another. Everything you see here, except for the battery, one of these switches and one of these branches will be included in the cube. The battery switch and branch are gonna be on the outside of the cube, just so that way you have an idea of where the power is coming in. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just get this started here. This might not be possible with uh, a pre-built base or one that you are just expanding on but if possible I'd recommend trying to get these walls hard side in when you make these placements especially these first furnaces and while we've got the room here we're gonna go ahead and put these splitters down as well now we're gonna want to get some frames down here let's go ahead and just get these uh, connected right quick. So something that I learned and like probably a little bit too late is that you can connect all of these furnaces together and have one input, one output for all daisy chained furnaces and it works just the same as if you put conveyors attached to all of them. It might be a touch slower. Somebody who has more knowledge on that than me might be able to weigh in. I'd maybe check out uh, some of Jafar's videos. Uh, they've got some really good stuff go ahead and get this second row in. A lot of this build, I might be popping in and out of uh, God mode, like the no clip, just to make sure everything is placed right. But uh, if you do it right and you take your time, you should be able to do this in vanilla rust as well. So everything I do to kind of save time is mostly just for the sake of the video. It connects the back row to the front row. You've still got this uh, input down here, uh, which is kind of where like this whole daisy chain starts. We're going to need to connect that to the input box, which is going to go up on the top in a little bit here. Uh, but for the meantime, here's a little trick that I learned when putting this together. One of the limitations of the industrial system here is that you obviously can't run pipe through solid walls or through solid floors. You have to go around. There is a workaround, however, that I've employed in this design. Uh, that's why I've got this floor frame here. Uh, you can pass industrial piping through frames like this and then put a metal floor grate in uh, afterward. It works just fine. If I put the floor, like the metal floor grate, in right now i couldn't move any pipes from this bottom level up to this top level because the floor would block it with this combiner i can take the industrial piping from the lower level and just connect it to the combiner as sort of like a placeholder until we get the top floor in place with the floor grate and then we can connect the industrial piping uh, from basically the lower level system to the top level system We'll get to that one in a second, but it'll just kind of hold a space for now. We're also going to want to get these conveyors down, so I'll just go ahead and get them placed as well. The first time I built this, I wasn't as concerned with aesthetics, but this time I want it to look good, just so that way it's a little bit more straightforward and easy to follow. All right, let's get some branches down so we can start... Uh, managing the electrical grid a little bit because we're going to want to try to get things wired up sooner rather than later. Okay, garage door just to seal it all in. We'll put another branch here just to manage power output. All right, let's get things wired. We're going to start with yellow as the power source. And output is going to go straight into this branch. It's basically uh, this switch, this branch, each eat up one rust watt per minute 
from the entire circuit. And every component that you add uh, that you actually have to power is going to eat some amount of electricity from the circuit. So you just need to keep that management uh, in mind while you're putting this stuff together. With that said, we're going to go ahead and flop this. So the branch is going to get 96 rust watts. The uh, standard output is going to just have the two watts that I think it has to run. Well, no, okay, so we can bump it down to just one. So that way we've got one coming off the, off the power out um, and one for the branch. We could use the power out to just power a light or something if you like. You can look over and see, oh, is the light on? If the light's on, then that means the furnace room is on. Okay, so with that, we're going to go ahead and start getting these things wired up. We're going to want to start with wiring the splitters straight into the furnaces. So power out for one. Go ahead and just run it straight in. You can definitely do a little bit better cable management than I am here. Feel free to do it however you like with your system. Make it as pretty as you like. Let's go ahead and pop in the last row of furnaces here. Perfect. You want to try to get these things as snug as you can into this build because it's going to really make a big difference in the end if these things are all squeezed in. Let's see. How close are we? Oh, beautiful. Okay, so as you can see, unless you're peeking through these gaps, you can't really tell what's going on behind this door. You don't really know what's in there open it up and then boom you can see all the furnaces are just looking so pretty so this industrial out is going to want to go up to the second layer where it will then meet with these furnaces here feed them from the input box and then route to the output box so output here we're going to run it straight to the wall and then up to that other combiner just like so so now what you're seeing here is you've got input box, which where you put the raw ore. It's going to feed into one of these three industrial inputs. Uh, you can wire more into if you want to make more drop boxes for this system in other parts of your base. But just for this design, we're just going to use a fully self-contained cube. But it does give you the option to expand down the line if you like. And we're going to go ahead and power the output uh, through here. So this is going to be some smelted ore moving out as well as some uncooked ore uh, moving into the upper level furnaces. Let's go ahead and get these furnaces wired up as well, just to keep everything consistent. These branches need to get connected to the grid as well. And it's going to go right into this first branch. Now we're going to take this one branch and power this branch. From these branches, we need to run power into these splitters. We want to make sure that we're getting the most efficient circuit possible. Uh, so if we do that, we need to just make sure that we're feeding these furnaces with exactly as much power as they need. They each should require three rust watts per minute to run. And this uh, splitter here requires one rust watt per minute just to provide the split. Now, make sure we're branching out just the amount that we need. So it should be, let's see, three for each furnace is nine. One for the splitter should be 10. So let's try 10 off that and see what that does. Ah, yes, okay. So we need to split this one up as well. Um, this one, we're gonna take the primary power out from this branch here, and we're gonna run it to power these two conveyors. And that way we can set the lowest figure for it and it won't be using up any additional energy from the system. And we can use the configurable branches to like power, manage the power in the grid, basically. Might be a little confusing. It's confusing to me too, so. Okay, so there's 94 rust wads coming out and two on the branch. So we just need to flop that. So we make it 94 and that should maintain power to both of these with no wasted pass through. Perfect. Okay, so those two conveyors are powered and fully functional now. Let's see how much is coming to this branch. Okay, so 10 are coming off of that splitter. Make sure that these furnaces are working. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, let's make sure that energy coming in is what we're expecting. There we go. Three off the splitter, 10 going in, three, three, three out. 
Perfect. Okay, so that's great news. So let's take a look at what's coming on here. So 83 are coming out, 97 are com or 94 are coming off of this branch. Two are going to the conveyors. So that's good stuff. Let's take this power out, this primary power out, and go to this branch here. Now we're going to try to get 10 off of this branch as well to power one of these other splitters. Then let's see how much is coming off of this one. 72 coming off that main. We're going to run it back to this splitter or to this branch rather and then get another 10 for the remaining lower level splitter. Okay, so that is wired in fully now. This bottom row should all be functioning. Wait, did I connect to the wrong one? I did, yeah. Um, okay, so with that done, we need to link these conveyors to this uh, grid here so that way we can seal off the bottom level. This input here, uh, we're gonna run it, yeah, I guess we run it green because why not? And then that will go into the box. Let's go ahead and get our filter set up here. So this is gonna be sulfur ore, it's gonna be metal ore, and it's gonna be high qual ore. Apply. So it's going to start looking for those coming into these inputs, pull them from wherever they are into this system here. Now we're going to go ahead and connect this conveyor back to the grid, get that wired back up. Power in. So with that, we're going to go ahead and toss down the floor grates. And you can see it snaps right in, even though there's pipes intersecting the path. And it will still allow stuff to flow from top to bottom in here. We're going to go ahead and upgrade this to metal now, just to give us a little bit more room for this placement. Because it's going to be necessary to squeeze in a couple of small boxes on here. Um, I've done it with a stone floor frame before but i've been having some trouble getting that to work today so we're just going to do it the slightly easier way And then we get these small boxes here. These are going to be input and output boxes. So you can deposit ore into one and withdraw cooked material from the other. Uh, now let's go ahead and get these connected. So we'll start with the output. This one's pretty straightforward. It's going to go into this output box right here. All right. And then this one is going to be the raw ore box. And that should be the industrial piping fully connected. We can test it in just a second. Let's go ahead and get these connected to the furnaces. So we have power. All right, let's make sure this all works. A, A, that's pretty good. Okay, so that's all looking great. Let's go ahead and put a roof on it. Just confirm that it is fully self-contained. Like, from the outside, you would have pretty much no idea what's going on in here unless you could peek through these. But even so, it's kind of hard to tell. Let's go ahead and uh, run some ore through it. We'll just make sure that everything is functioning the way it should. Oh, I don't know if I set up the conveyor up here, actually. That's funny. Um, so let's uh, metal fragments, uh, sulfur, and high quality metal. This was not connected back to this lower level here. There we go. Now let's see. There we go. Oh, it's beautiful. You'll love to see it. 
It's moving. More cheese. Hey, more cheese. And this box has been completely drained. Everything went into these lower furnaces, but that's okay. I'll show you that it does work fully. We'll put some more stuff into these here. And then you'll see these boxes right at the end, or these furnaces right at the end of the rotation are starting to fill up as well here. Yeah, so that's that. Uh, I did the math on this and tested this the other day. Uh, this furnace setup, this exact setup here, uh, can push 1,000 uncooked metal ore through to fragments in just about 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Almost exactly. So just keep that in mind. Uh, <laughs> compared to a large furnace or the small uh, low grade based furnaces, um, this is a crazy efficient system. No wood needed, just a good amount of electricity of course uh, for this whole system. Again, we're looking at a leftover 39 rust watts per minute from 100. So it's kind of a steal uh, 61 rust watts just to power this whole grid um, and I think that's kind of worth it I mean if you look here it's already almost cooked up those a full stack of sulfur since we started um, this box is draining rapidly and these furnaces are cooking up quick so that's how to build the super forge in a nutshell Again, this is just another one-by-one -one tutorial. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. Uh, again, there is another Super Cube video already made that showcases this hard side, soft side, and how you can stuff more stuff into these cubes using that building hack. <laughs> feel free to like, comment, subscribe on any of these videos. It definitely helps a lot in terms of getting my videos out there. Let me know if you use this and how it worked, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.